So in this one, we're going to be installing the JDK Android Studio uh, and everything that is needed to, to make sure that you can create a React Native app on Windows. So where do we start? So we're going to be starting here. So this is the React Native Doctor. So this is a tool that allows us to know what exactly we need. But for it to run, we are going to need to have npm installed, which you can get by installing Node.js. So let's go ahead and install Node.js. We're going to be installing Node.js 14.17. But any version that will be here when you visit the site is going to be acceptable. So also, we are going to need the JDK. All right. OK, so let's go ahead and first install Node.js. And then we are going to take a look at the React Native Doctor tool. So make sure you, you make, make sure it is added to path, so don't change anything. Automatically set up tools, keep the defaults here. All right, so now we have Node.js and we can verify by, I'm gonna bring up the, the command line. So I'm gonna be using the command prompt. So we can check if Node was installed by typing in Node-V. And you can see we have Node here. So let's go ahead and now use the use the doctor tool to be able to tell what exactly we need. So we're gonna to need to run this command here. So I'm gonna copy it. Yep, let's run that. So you can see this warning here says we need to run this in a React Native project. So normally you'd use this for the di for diagnosing your project. So if maybe something is if your project is not running, you would run this in your project and then it's gonna go ahead and check these things. For now, don't worry. Let's go ahead and now install the things it says we are missing, the JDK, Android Studio, and then the SDK. On the Android Studio website, I'm going to click download Android Studio. We need to accept the agreement. So I'm going to click OK. So also, we need to download the JDK. So JDK is the Java Development Kit. Basically, all the software that Android uses, it is built on top of Java. So it's going to need Java to be installed on our machine in order for it to run properly. So I'm going to go here. And on the site, you want to go to a specific installer for your current machine. So I'm going to click this one since I'm on a 64 bit machine. I will accept the terms. All right, so once my login is correct, or once your login is correct, then you can go ahead and uh, click install, and it's going to uh, go, go ahead and confirm, and it's going to go ahead and start to, to download the JDK. So one other thing we are going to need to download is a text editor. Now we could go ahead and set up Android Studio, make it work to build our React Native app completely, but that's not what we want for sure. We want the agility that we get building React apps. So sure, let's get VS Code. So I imagine you have it, but if you don't, download it too. I'm going to now install the JDK. So I'm going to double click on that. The terms of software changed. Okay, we just need to get that JDK set up. All right, so it's going to give us development tools, source code, and JRA. That's okay. It's going to install the JDK here and also the JRA. So this is just software that it needs behind the scenes. So let's keep the defaults. All right, so our Java installation is done. Let's go ahead and close here. So now that we have the JDK installed, let's go ahead and also install Android Studio. So I'm going to double click on that. So we'll go through the Android Studio installation setup. So we'll click next here. So right here, we wanted to install the Android Virtual Device. Now the Android Virtual Device is just a term for the emulator. So we want to go ahead and install the emulator because we, are, we use that to test our applications. So let's go ahead and continue. We'll choose only the defaults. It wants to create shortcuts. Okay, go ahead. Android Studio has completed installation. So we want to click next on it and let's start it because we are going to need to install a few other things. Android Studio has actually evolved so much over the years. So every time we open it, we have a new UI. So yeah, looks pretty neat. So what we need to do here is click on more options and we want to go to the SDK manager. So on the SDK manager, we want to make sure that we install this. So we want to make sure that we install the API level 31, the API level 30 or 31. So I'm actually, so one needs to be updated somehow. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So we also need to set up the virtual device. So you can click on, on, on more actions and then you click on AVD. So the AVD manager enables us to manage virtual devices. So then we can click on create virtual device. Then you want to click the device you want. 
I'll click next. So we need to set up a system image. If you don't have one setup, you can download one. When it finishes, you can use it. Right now I have two set up here. So these two, I guess downloaded with Android Studio. So we wanna click next. Then we are gonna click finish. And that's going to go ahead and create it. So now I'm going to start it here. Okay, so now I can close the AVD manager. And here we have the emulator being open. We have the emulator opening up. So down here, if I click on SDK manager, uh, we go to SDK tools. We have some things here we need to set up. So we have the, the SDK tools, we must have this. So make sure that one is there. If, it, if it's not, check it and then you can click OK. And then you should be able to install it. The emulator, check it. And this Hyper-V for AMD. Okay, so that's good. One other thing I want you guys to install is the Google USB driver. So this makes it easier to do USB debugging. So if you're having any issues with, with USB debugging, make sure you have this. And also if you're on an Intel, on an, on an Intel machine, you're going to need to also install this. All right. So let's click that and let's confirm that we, we want this to, in, to install. We get the, the, the license, we accept the license and uh, it should be pretty fast and click finish okay so now that we are done there now we can go ahead and run our doctor command again so wherever you see an error so wherever you see this just know it is missing so you can see it didn't get the jdk so for us to be able to fix it we are going to go to our computer so i'm going to click the file explorer then i'm going to click on this pc so we want to right click and click on properties all right, then we want to go to advanced system settings and go to environment variables. So here we need to set up Java and add it to our path. So the Android path was actually added automatically by Android Studio. So to find our Java home or where our Java lives now, what we want to do is we want to go to this PC. Then you want to go to your local disk. So you go to program files. So Java is here. So you want to click on it. And then you see where we have the JDK here. You want to click on that and this is what we want to pick. So I'm going to copy this. So I'll just right click and copy. So in our, in our environment variables, on here, we want to click new and we want to say Java underscore home. And we can set that value to, to the one we just copied. So I'll click OK. So this is for the current user. Let's also add it to the system. So here we can also do new java underscore home. So let's set the value. It's going to be this very one. So also we have this path variable. So if we click on this, we can also add it here. All right, click OK. Let's also add it on the path for the system. So click edit and uh, Add it here, so we need to do new and add it. Click OK, save everything, and up, click here to apply. We have the Android Home setup. We have the Java Home setup. Now we have Android, Android. We have Android Studio setup. We have the emulator setup. Now we can go ahead and create our React Native project. I'm going to CD onto the desktop, so I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this mobile projects. So here, let's create a React Native app using NPX. So when you install Node.js, it comes with NPM. So they have a tool called NPX that allows you to run a package without actually installing it. So when I run React Native in it, so I'm going to do example project here. Then run it. So we run React NPX React Native in it, example project. And now, it's gonna go ahead and start to basically create a React Native project for us. All right, so it looks like things went well. So what we need to do is CD into the project. So I'm going to CD into example project. So CD, what is this? So CD into example project. So, so now if we go to VS Code, we can say open folder and we wanna go to where we want to go to 
where we created the project so mine is in mobile projects so i'm gonna click on my mobile projects this is the example project so i'm gonna select this and it should be able to open here so now we have our react native project so i'm going to bring up the terminal so if we go to package json file so package.json let's take a look at the available scripts so we need to start the react native packager so that's like the the dev server that's going to be watching that's going to be watching our changes and communicating them to the connected devices so here we want to run npm start so npm start we also have the script to run it on android which is android here so we want to also now run our application on android so i'm going to create a new terminal i'm going to create a new command prompt window and here we do npm run android like this so now things are good we are able to keep developing if you have any issues here be sure to ask a question